Hey guys, Sam Rano here with another video. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at stabilization, whether you should have it on or leave it off when you shoot it in high shutter speed and specifically for birds in flight. You know, it's the most asked question that I get here on YouTube and especially on Instagram because I always post my settings whenever I post a picture, just in case I help someone. And I always get the question, why are you leaving stabilization off when you shoot it in high shutter speed? So I figured let me make a video dedicated to this subject since I always get this question all the time. I know I've covered it before in some of my tips videos briefly, but I figured let me make a, a video dedicated on this subject. We could dive a little deeper into it, discuss it, talk about it, and show you some examples of what I'm talking about. And I also wanted to cover what I think is the proper shutter speed for birds in flight and action shots. You know, if you do things differently, you don't agree with what I'm saying, or you have something else that works for you, by all means, I'm not trying to force anything on anybody. I'm just trying to help some people that are wondering about this subject or are struggling. And I'm just sharing what works for me. But before we get started, I just want to talk about something briefly. A company called BenQ approached me a few weeks back. They're a great company, make some great products. And they asked me to take a look at a product they released recently. They said, if it looks interesting to you, would love to send it to you. All we ask is that you use it and just share what you think of it. And you know, I made a promise to myself a while back that I would never accept anything unless it was something that I believed in or something that I would use myself. You know, I'm not a big channel. I don't get approached a lot, but I do get approached sometimes. And for example, like company approached me with uh, third party batteries and that's something that I would never use. So I never accepted them. But getting back to this product, so it looked interesting to me. I agreed for them to send it to me. And here it is, and uh, this is my setup. And it was so easy to install, it literally took me 30 seconds to install it. Uh, and what it is, it's a monitor light that installs right in the top of your monitor. It took me literally 30 seconds to install it. I didn't even look at the directions, but look at the directions, don't be like me. <laughs> and it hooks up right to your USB, so you don't need any special power or plugs or anything like that. And you get this really awesome dial that sits right on top of your desk that controls everything on the light, on and off, uh, brightness, color temperature. And, you know, honestly, when I first looked at the product, I didn't think, you know, it, it looked interesting to me, but I did not think I would be that blown away by it like I, like I have been since I started using it. And, you know, for somebody like me that's in front of the monitors all the time, uh, you know, editing pictures or videos for hours. You know, the biggest thing I struggle with is light in the room. I'm always end up turning off all the lights because it's causing some kind of glare or it's bothering me. Uh, and you know, what this light does is it gives you the perfect light, illuminates your, your monitor perfectly and your desk. And it's, it, it's so easy on the eyes and you can adjust it to where you like it uh, uh, with that dial and it just, causes no glare. I find myself being able to edit for longer and sit in front of my monitor longer without getting any eye fatigue or getting any uh, getting a headache. You know, even my wife seen it and she was like, wow, this is really cool. And I ended up buying one for her out of my own pocket just to show you how much I loved it. It's a really cool product, guys, especially if you're in front of your monitor all the time. It really, really, you know, does a great job of illuminating your desk and giving you the perfect light uh, without, you know, I, causing you a headache or glare or anything like that. I'm gonna put a, a link to the product uh, in the description in the video. I don't make a dime from you clicking on this link or buying the product. Uh, they're not sponsoring me, they're not paying me anything. Uh, you know, they're not, they didn't ask me to say anything good or bad either way. Uh, they just asked my, you know, to use it and just tell you about it. Uh, but check it out guys, it's a really fantastic product. I've been using it all the time since I got it now and uh, I'm honestly blown away by it. So anyway, my friend Jeff says that I've been talking way too long in the introductions in my last few videos, and I really apologize if I've been doing that. You know, sometimes I'm passionate about a subject and I end up talking way too long without realizing it, so I really apologize for that. So I'm gonna take his advice now and I'm gonna shut up. So let's dive a little deeper into this and take a look at some of the examples and talk about it and discuss it. And all right, I'm shutting up now. Now when I say I'm shutting up, am I still talking? I guess I am. See, I can't stop talking. All right, I'm shutting up now. I'm still talking. No, really, I'm shutting up. I'm still talking. I can't stop talking. So I started experimenting with stabilization on and off about four or five years ago. 
right when I was switching between uh, Nikon and Sony. And I started going back and forth with it and trying it here and there, but I never really got the answer that I wanted, uh, whether I thought it was the better way to go or not. That wasn't, you know, I never got the definitive answer until a day that I ran into these gulls that were in a feeding frenzy in this pond. And the action was fierce that day and were flying all over the place and fishing and chasing each other. And and I took, you know, about 250 shots that day. And I didn't realize until after I was done shooting that I had stabilization off purely by accident, honestly. But now I was really curious to see the results. Uh, I couldn't wait to get home to look at the pictures. I mean, they look good in the back, back of the camera, but... Uh, and when I got home and looked at them closely, I, I was so pleasantly surprised to find that I, I had maybe about six or seven that weren't keepers. The rest were all keepers. Um, I, I got some great results. And from that day forward, uh, I always shot with stabilization off. Whenever I was shooting in high shutter speed, uh, action shots or birds in flight or anything like that. And I've been getting great results with it. And it's definitely the way to go for me personally. Um, you know, guys, when you're shooting in high shutter speed, you really, I mean, you honestly don't need it. You don't need stabilization. You just, it's just another thing to introduce motion blur or all kinds of other issues. Uh, it's not needed when you're shooting in not high shutter speed. And that's another thing I'm going to address proper, uh, shutter speed for, uh, action and birds in flight. Uh, but I'm going to leave you with a few more pictures and then, uh, we'll pick it up. And I want to talk about some other things that could be affecting why you're getting uh, bad results sometimes. All right, guys, enjoy the pictures. Guys, it's a beautiful day like this, and this area is beautiful, uh, you know, sometimes just being out here is enough, you know, getting some shots of course would be fantastic, but even if I don't get any shots, you know, it's just so relaxing guys, and it's so beautiful to be out here, you know, just sometimes, you know, don't stress so much about the shots and enjoy where you are, enjoy what you're doing, you know, and the shots will come, you know, they always do. All right, guys. So one thing I wanted to touch on that could be messing with your picture sometimes, and that's heat, shimmer, and atmospheric haze. I don't see a ton of people talking about this. I know there's been some. I know Steve Perry made a video about it uh, a while back. Steve Perry's great, by the way. I, I don't know him personally or anything like that, but... 
He's very knowledgeable and he makes great videos. So I'm going to describe a scenario to you and see if this sounds familiar. You get a day that no matter what settings you try, no matter what focus mode you try, uh, every time you think you nailed it, you go to look at the picture closely and it looks really soft. It looks like it's out of focus and you can't figure out what's going on and you're getting really frustrated. You're banging your head against the wall. And what's probably happening is that you're getting the heat shimmer or atmospheric haze that's messing with your autofocus. And there's not a whole lot you could do when that's happening. I mean, there's a few things that can help. One is to try to get as close as possible because the further that you are, the worse that it gets because now you're introducing more of it between you and your subject. Uh, the other thing that you could try is you could try moving around that you're getting an angle that you're getting less heat shimmer uh, or, you know, maybe the sun is being diffused a little bit. Uh, but honestly, the best thing you could do is shoot in earlier in the day or later in the day because there's a lot less of that going on during those times. And that's why it's always recommended to shoot during those times, the best light. And I know it's not always possible to do that, but it's also counterproductive to try to shoot when you're getting interference like that and you're driving yourself nuts and getting frustrated and you're blaming your camera and you're blaming your autofocus and and really, there's not anything that you're doing wrong or your camera is doing wrong. It's just that, you know, you, you get in this uh, heat shimmer that's really messing with everything. And sometimes it's not always visible to your eye, but your camera sees it, your autofocus sees it. And don't think that this only happens in the summertime because this also happens in the wintertime, probably just as much. Uh, so it's not just a summer thing that you get heat shimmer and atmospheric haze. And the other thing that you might notice that happens to you is if you're trying to shoot out the passenger window while you're sitting in the driver's seat across your car, uh, now you're getting, you know, it's a different temperature inside your car. It's a different temperature outside. And that will also mess with your autofocus. If you ever notice that when you try shooting that way, a lot of times you'll get a lot of soft pictures because of that. Uh, also, if you try to shoot uh, across your hood, uh, you know, resting on your hood. And sometimes the heat coming off your hood will mess with your autofocus. Uh, and, it, and these are things that you don't see, but your camera sees it and it throws off your autofocus. Just be aware of those things because it can get really frustrating and it can make it into a bad experience when there's not, you know, there's a simple explanation for it. So just be aware of those things and, and you know, don't bang your head against the wall sometimes trying to, you know, get around it. Uh, and, you know, don't get me wrong. There's times where I try to shoot when it's not the perfect light. You know, we all do. But just be aware that those things are happening so you can try to work around them or not get frustrated. So the last thing I want to talk about is shutter speed. This is something that could definitely be affecting your birds in flight and action shots if you're not using the proper shutter speed. I keep revisiting this a lot in my videos because I keep seeing a lot of people resisting using higher shutter speed or uh, keep arguing against it. Perfect example is a guy a little while back on Instagram sent me a message. He said, you're using way too high a shutter speed for your birds in flight should only use 1,000 to 1,250 at most for birds in flight because I always post my settings like I said before. 
So I said, all right, I'm open-minded. And I went on his page and looked at his pictures, and 90% of them were either soft or had motion blur. And that explains why. I personally would never use that kind of shutter speed for birds in flight. The lowest I'll ever go down to is maybe 1,600 on, you know, days that I have really bad light and I'm shooting big birds like eagles and ospreys that are not very quick or fast and they're fairly large. But even those birds on days that I have good light, I'm shooting at 2,000 and above. And honestly, my favorite shutter speed is 3,200. And for I'll even go up to 4,000 and higher if I'm shooting uh, smaller, shiftier birds like uh, terns and smaller birds like that that are quick and shifty uh, and have a lot of motion in their wings. And if I really want to freeze the wings, I'll go up to 5,000 and above, you know, but some people like the effect of having motion or blur in the wings. So if you like that effect, you could definitely drop a little lower. Uh, but... You know, honestly, I would be more concerned about nailing the exposure by using your exposure compensation, um, especially if you're using mirrorless, because when you're looking through your EVF, uh, you know, what you see in the EVF is what the camera sees, so you can adjust that on the fly. And it's a lot more important nailing the exposure as close as possible because when you go to edit your pictures and you're trying to bring up the shadows or adjust the highlights and all that, that introduces noise just as much as high ISO. So I would be more concerned about nailing the exposure, honestly, and not worrying so much about uh, the higher ISO with shutter speed. I mean, what would you rather have? A picture that has motion blur uh, or soft or a picture that has a little noise that you can easily deal with with a lot of these newer programs like Topaz Denoise and some of these other programs that do an incredible job of getting rid of the noise and um, keeping detail. You know, and especially with these newer cameras, uh, the higher megapixel cameras, uh, you definitely need to use higher shutter speed because those cameras, any little mistake, any shake, any kind of motion blur it gets exaggerated uh with the high megapixel uh sensors um so you know give it a try guys if you're struggling uh you got nothing to lose you're not shooting film here where you got to go develop it or something so uh, you're shooting digital give it a try see if these things help you now if you're doing things and things uh you know you have no issues obviously do what keep doing what you're doing but if you're struggling give what i'm uh, the things i'm saying a try and see if it helps and that's all I got to say about that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. And until next time, guys, happy shooting and talk to you later.